welcome to the Lady Stars Knits podcast. My name is Sarah and I'm really excited to be sitting back down again to record after such a long break. Uh, I think that the last time I recorded was right before I went to the States uh, for some medical appointments and it's been a couple weeks so I've got a lot of stuff to show you. Bought a few things, I'm really excited about it. Um, so let's just get right into it. And you might notice that I'm wearing my first finished object, which is my ranunculus. Um, I made it out of yarn from uh, the farm of some friends of mine called Anfield Farm. It's the Anfield Angora yarn. It's a 50-50 mohair and local, yarn, local wool blend. Although I think that now they do a different blend. I think that now they're doing 70-30, so um, I'm not sure if you can get this exact yarn anymore. The new yarn, I'm sure, is also really nice. Um, it's got a beautiful halo. So yeah, this is the ranunculus. I knit it exactly to pattern. Um, I used six and a half millimeter needles, I think, and I did the small neck cast on which turned out very small, but then I kind of blocked it out and stretched it. Um, and I, I'm kind of hoping it's going to shrink back in a little bit. It's a little bit... My partner came home, so I stopped recording to say hello. Um, I was telling you about my ranunculus. The gauge is quite loose, and I think that that really brings out any unevenness in stitches. So there are some parts of it that look a little bit uneven. Um, but that's okay. Not too big of a deal. The other thing is that the sleeves are about three-quarter length. That was sort of an accident. I would prefer full length sleeves. I think that eventually I will pull out the eye cord and re-knit the sleeves, but I am enjoying having this and wearing it. And actually the three quarter length sleeves are quite convenient. So I'm gonna stick with it for a little while. Um, it's quite long. It's a little bit longer than I intended, um, but I think it's nice and I really like it. I think it would be a really good thing to wear especially like in this colder spring time. Um, and I think that it looks nice and it's quite soft too. Are you staying or are you going, buddy? He's staying. The other finished object that I have, and I hope that this doesn't scare Fergie away, is my tray step, um, which is done. Here it is. Oh. So, I'm glad to have this finished. I knit the body quite short. It's a little bit longer in the back. I did a split hem, which I kind of regret, so I might sew up the split hem. Um, but it works perfectly for the purpose that I intended it which is to wear under my thin raincoat for warmth. Um, I knit the sleeves just straight, and then I did a quite long two by two cuff at the end. I finished the plate of mutagen that I was working on for the sleeve, maybe, I don't know, a couple of inches before where I wanted the sleeve to end. And I looked in the bag, like the Ziploc vacuum seal bag where I keep my mutagen, other than the mutagen that I keep on the bookshelf over there. And it looks like there are moth eggs in the bag, which is devastating. So I didn't open it. I didn't want to pull out a plate from there and potentially endanger everything that's not in the bag. I think um, my parents are going away for a little while. I don't have a freezer, but I'm thinking I might try and put it in their freezer, just the whole Ziploc bag while they're away for a couple weeks and see if that helps. But it is possible that I just say farewell and goodbye to all of my mutagen. 
in that bag. It's really sad. I don't know. I've never really dealt with moths and I really don't want to introduce them to my flat or to anywhere really. Um, and knitted in as such a sort of fragile yarn that I don't feel like I'm able to wash it in the plate and I would worry about like baking it in the oven, which I hear is another way to get rid of moths, although then don't you have moth egg residue in your oven? I don't want that. So I don't know. I'm, I'm still sort of looking into it and trying to decide what to do. But anyway, so I was almost finished the jumper and I ran out of knitted in and I have loads of this green color left, but it's all in the moth zone. So I just <laughs> marled in, faded in some gray at the end. I hope that you'll be able to see. I put one strand of the gray here and then just knit the rest of the green and then just finished it off with gray. And I honestly don't think that it's very visible. Like when you look for it, you can see it, but if I'm just wearing it, you don't really notice it. I think because it's quite a similar total value. Um, and I also have the, like that, I don't, the botaniska color, which is sort of a lighter, more muted green. So I thought about using that, but ultimately I thought it would be more subtle with the same tonal color, because this dark green is quite a dark color, um, rather than like fading to a lighter color. So I'm quite happy with the decision I made. I'm not happy with what, what happened. Um, it's possible I'm wrong and that it's not moth eggs, but I really don't want to risk it and they're all sealed up in there. So, hello. Hello. So, yeah. He's so cute. So I guess those are my two finished objects. I will now start showing you some of my works in progress. And I don't want Fergus to move because he's really cute and he's being very nice. So I'll go in chronological order of what I was knitting on them. So to begin with, in my last video I talked a lot about socks and the socks that I was going to knit on the plane. Goodbye. And so so I will show you the two pairs of socks that I worked on on the airplane. Neither of them are done, but both of them are pretty far along. This is my sock tube with the yarn I've spoken about endlessly. Um, I'm kind of allergic to it, very glad to be done with the sock tube. It's long and I knit a lot of this when I had to sit at the airport almost all night because my flight that was supposed to be an overnight flight was delayed by over six hours. So I just sat and I knit and I knit and I knit on this sock tube and I listened to Jeanette McCurdy's audiobook, I'm Glad My Mom Died, which was really depressing. Not really a formula for a good night, but it got me through it. I did make it back here eventually. So this was, this is the long sock. I think that I will have really decent length socks. I probably won't keep them because I already have a pair of socks in this yarn. Um, so I'll give them to someone, not sure who. Um, but yeah, I'm excited that I've used up this yarn, which was beautifully hand dyed. The toe is Raisin by Sugar Plum Circus, which is a, it's a sort of purpley brown. Um, and I used it in my shawlography. And I bought that yarn in Seattle at my partner's brother's wedding. So it's good memories of buying that yarn. The other sock that I worked on, socks, are a pair of Andrea Mary's, uh, the DRK Everyday socks, I think. The fingering weight version of the Bear Paw socks that she came out with in November. So I thought I'll knit the fingering weight version because the DK version came out way too big. So I 
I've used this yarn before. Patton's Baby Patton's Croy. It, it's actually a sport weight yarn, but I've used it for socks before. It's beautiful. It's a sock yarn. Um, and the socks that I made are one of my favorite pairs of socks that I've ever made. So I was excited to use it again, but I think that when I knit it last time, I knit with a 3.25 millimeter needle. Um, but I thought, no, it's fine. I'll just bring my 2.25 because I wanted to do magic loop and I didn't have a 3.25 magic loop needle. Um, so I did two at a time and I knit, I got like a good halfway up the foot and then I realized that the fabric is just too dense. It's not gonna be good, it's not gonna be comfortable. So I unraveled and this is sort of what happens every time I knit two at a time anything. They have to get unraveled every single time. So when I was knitting up the, I was, so I re-knit the first one, mostly also at the airport during that six hour delay. Um, I didn't get a lot of knitting done when I was in the States because I was really busy, but at the airport I got a lot done. So, yeah, so I, when I got to America, I went to my local yarn store and I bought some 3mm DPNs. I didn't really want to go to 3.5, I don't know why, I just wasn't feeling it. So I bought some DPNs that were 3mm and I re-knit this and I think that the the fabric is much nicer. Um, but again, I think that the sock is too big for me. It's something about, just this is a, feels like a very long gusset. And I don't know if it actually is, but the sock is a bit too big for me. Yeah, I'm not sure how, how the best way to show you this is, but is this good? Can you see? So the foot is just too long. The heel is like up around my ankle and it's really disappointing. It was, I really didn't enjoy knitting these socks. Something about just the endless ribbing was just I didn't like it. Um, I've kind of been putting off knitting the other one because it felt like it took so long. To be fair, it does have quite a long leg. Um, I just decided to knit the whole ball. But even the foot, just the ribbing, felt like it took forever. Um, and this part also did, it was taking forever because it was a really dense fabric. But um, yeah, sort of a bad experience knitting these socks. I still love this yarn. I really like the patterning. I think that this is the color uh, Slate Jacquard by Patton's. Um, yeah, and it's like a really hardy, really good sock yarn. If they just don't fit me, they're also too big, just like the Verpa socks. So I'm not really sure I really, I'm not going to rip them out because it took such a long time um, to make them, but I'm a bit disappointed that they don't fit. I might give them to my dad if he wants them. Mm. They're lovely socks, they just um, are too big for me. And I've been holding onto this sock yarn for years and years uh, because I really like it, so it's a bit disappointing. But. I think that they'll make a lovely pair of socks for someone else. When I get around to doing the second one, this all has to come out up to the toe. I left the toe in because it's fine if that's a bit denser. Um, so that is that work in progress. My second work in progress to show you. So then I got back from the States. I finished this jumper. I finished the other jumper, which is now a seat for my cat, Fergus. And I... I have been so jealous of this cowl that I made for my boyfriend. Let me see if I can grab it. So every couple of years, I make my boyfriend Dylan a new hat. Um, and this is his current hat. It's the chess pattern. I don't remember who it's by, but it's gorgeous. I used, um, I think that this white is round felted, round, Kid Classic, 
and the blue is Nora Silk Garden. And he wears it, he's extremely knitworthy. He wears it loads every day, pretty much, that's cold. Um, so 2020, actually I think it was 2021, I decided I would make him a cowl and I would use all of my alpaca, like chunky alpaca. The pattern is based on the Duotone cowl by something flower knits. I'll put it on the screen. I had made one of those in the past and it's, it's gorgeous using sort of similar to Baby Alpaca Grande, Plymouth Baby Alpaca Grande, um, like a bulky weight 100% alpaca yarn. So I made myself a cowl years and years ago. It was one of the first things I made. Um, and I loved it. I wore it loads. I don't know where that is. If I had it, I would be wearing it. But so a few years ago, I made Dylan this cowl. I used three full skeins of a baby alpaca grande or a yarn similar to it. I don't think it was all that specific one, but they were like similar, pretty fancy. This is heavy. It's 300 grams. And I just knit the whole thing all of the skeins up um, and it's quite thick. There's my seam. And then when I got to the end, I kitchener stitched the ends together. Um, and I did a very good job of it. I can't find where I kitchener stitched. So I did a good job at that. Um, and it's great and he wears it a lot and I'm so jealous of it. So I've been wanting to make myself a scarf or a cowl or something for quite a while. I've been wearing my shawlography quite a lot because I didn't put the border on. So it's quite long and thin. I'll show you. So yeah, this is it. It's quite long and thin. So I do normally just wear it as a scarf like that. Um, but I want like a scarf that's supposed to be a scarf because I also don't really enjoy scrunching this up. So I've been really wanting to make myself a scarf to fill that gap because I don't, I don't think I've ever knit like actually a scarf and I haven't made myself a cowl in years and years. Um, so in when I was making the twists and turns knit along shawl, which I ended up ceasing to knit, I, I just was in love with the yarns that I had chosen for it, which is um, a silk alpaca from Nervous Fibers in the color Psyche and a cotton alpaca from Zakami Yarns. Both of these yarn dyers are really local to me um, and I got these both of these at Perth Festival of Yarn. Um, so I was really in love with the way that the fabric looked in the first section. Um, so I wanted to make something that would be sort of similar to this, use these yarns together, but also just be a very simple shape, simple, sh like long scarf shaped object. Um, so I sort of chagrined, I decided I would make the Sophie shawl by Petite Knit. I, I have quite bad associations with Petite Knit. I think that there was some drama about her designing patterns, her, her patterns not being size inclusive in the past, and I think that there are some really negative experiences that some members of the fiber community had with her, um, specifically about how she never advertises her patterns on bodies that aren't thin and white, um, and I agree with that. I agree with all of those things. I've never had any bad experiences with her, but I also haven't had any good experiences with her. So I don't have anything to share on it. But since then, I've been a bit hesitant to knit her patterns, um, just because there are so many designers out there who I really want to support. Um, but I thought that I would knit the Sophie shawl because it looked really nice. And I thought that I might be able to just figure it out based on the notes in a lot of people's project pages on Ravelry, and I did. I would say 
it's very easy to figure, just figure out the pattern. It's got a three stitch I cord on either edge and you start with just that and then every, however many rows, you increase one stitch on one side. And if you search through people's projects on Ravelry, people will say like, I increased this many rows instead of this many rows. Like I increased every X rows instead of every Y rows, which is in the pattern, if that makes sense. So you don't really need to buy the pattern. You can reverse engineer it. I bought the pattern because I wanted to know if there was any sort of finishing details. I wanted to specifically make sure I was starting it right. I kind of regret it because there are no specific details and there's no trick to starting it. You just cast on for the eye cords. Um, but I'll show you my shawl. I'm exactly halfway through and I love it. I'm striping it. Um, every other increase I am doing a stripe and I'm knitting the whole thing on what are these like five inch DPNs? <laughs> I just I don't have straight needles and I find working flat on the interchangeable needles to be really fiddly and bothersome so I started out working on straight needles and it was fine because it's like quite a skinny narrow pattern right and then I got to at this stage the most stitches that there's going to be in the pattern and I just tied sort of looped a hair bobble hair tie loosely around underneath where I've been knitting and that holds all the stitches together so it's not like coming off when I let go and it's been fine so that's maybe like a niche element, like quality of this pattern can be fully knit on DPNs if you only have two DPNs. So I'm at the halfway point. The end of this purple is the halfway. So here it is. And this is just a, actually an old nose ring of mine that, um, I used to, at the early stages, to mark which side was the increased side. Um, and I'm, so, I'm using fingering weight yarn. I think the pattern calls for iron or worsted, but it's the same. It just, it's really just a rate of increase. It, and then it's called a pattern. Um, I don't want to sound too harsh on it, but that is how I feel, kind of. I am really excited to have the final product but I really don't think that you need to spend the money on the pattern especially if you don't feel comfortable supporting a designer who might not have be like beliefs that line up with your own um, I think it would be very easy to knit an almost identical thing just by figuring it out um, it's just in garter stitch it's really stretchy I love the yarn for the second half of this, I'm planning on doing a sort of knit pearl thing that will mimic this texture more. Not with the zigzags, but with the sort of purling, having the pearl side be the orange and the knit side be the purple. Um, I think that that would be really nice, but I just need to figure it out and try and maybe ideally make it so that I'm not purling too, too much. Because right now it's reversible. It won't be reversible, fully reversible at the end. I mean, it will be, but not, it won't look identical on each side. Um, so yeah, this has been quite a lot of work because I'm using fingering white yarn. I think most of the people who say that it's fast are using thicker yarn. That makes sense. It looks kind of sheer with the light, but it's really not. And it's a beautiful drapey, I, just, I mean, it's just gorgeous. So I'm very excited to have this one. I kind of lost steam at the halfway point. I was going really pretty fast, spending a lot of time on it, but really focusing solely on this. Um, but. It's just gonna take me a couple hours to figure out like what rows to knit, what rows to purl. Um, and the repeat number is different from the number of rows that 
make up this so I can't copy this exactly uh, for the second half of the pattern. So it's just going to take sitting down one time to figure out, which I will do soon because now I have a lot of whips and I would like, I really want this to wear almost every day. I desire a scarf. So very excited. I'm not going to run out of yarn. I have another skein of each of these. Uh, I haven't weighed these, but I probably will need to break into the second skeins, but I don't mind doing that. My last project is a sock, which I'll just show you briefly and I won't spend too much time talking about it because I am planning on making a dedicated video, where a series where I knit through each of the socks that Stephen West releases in his Year of Socks ebook. Um, so this is the first one that I've done. It's the Painting Brick Sock, and I'm sort of I'm quite far into the foot right now. Maybe just over halfway of the foot. Um, I'm really enjoying this pattern. I'm using two colors from my shawlography again, and I'm not I'm not using mini skeins for the brick part because I don't have many mini skeins. So just using one solid color. I think it's looks really good. I've never done a garter heel flat before and when I tried it on it was really like kind of weirdly stretchy. So I'm interested in seeing how that will wear and if I don't like the way it wears I might substitute it for a slip stitch heel in future patterns. But I'm really excited about this. I'm excited about the project and hopefully you'll see this video coming very soon because I'm making speedy progress on these socks. So those are all of my works in progress. Two finished jumpers, three pairs of socks, a shawl. Yeah, that's it. That's quite a lot for me, I think. Um, so maybe next time I will have finished some of these, maybe not, who knows. I really want to get back into my recording schedule. I miss having it every other week. Um, so. I'm still working on my finals from last term and the new term has started this week. Hopefully by the end of this week, I'll be ready to go, done with the finals, um, and I can get back into a bit more of a comfortable routine where I'm not working late into the night every night. Um, that's, my, that's my dream. And in that magical future world, I will be able to record more regularly. Um, I'll show you some of the things, that some of the yarn that I've acquired uh, in the past, I guess, month, month? It's been a month since I've recorded. Uh, some of it was a gift for Hanukkah from my parents. Some of it was purchased by me. So I went into Loop in Philadelphia looking for three millimeter DPNs so that I could redo my DRK everyday socks at a looser gauge. And it came out with a sweater's quantity of yarn. It is the Kelborn Cricket yarn, which I just saw it, and it's so nice. It says it's a sport weight. It does not look like a sport weight to me. It looks like a fingering weight. Um, I got four skeins of it, which is definitely enough for a sweater, I guess it is a fingering weight, 380 meters per 100 grams. The only problem is that it's single ply and I was sort of just blown away by how beautiful it was in the shop. But I didn't think about like the realities of making a single ply garment. I've done it in the past and it, it just hasn't worn very well. So I'm not totally sure what I'm gonna do. I don't wanna spend months making something for it to not wear well. It is gorgeous yarn, but I wish I thought a little bit more about it. I could make a shawl, I could hold it with mohair, um, or I could just do it anyway and hope for the best. But yeah, I, I was very sort of swept away. I hadn't been into this yarn shop in ages and they I just, it's really stunning yarn. I made quite a big swatch of it, but I'm not sure where it is. But I would have to knit it up, I think, on 3.5 millimeter needles, so that's, that's a fingering weight gauge for me. Um, 
but it did have a very nice fabric. I think that it is a super wash yarn. Well, it says hand wash. Maybe it's not a super wash. It's got these beautiful tweed flecks of white, black, yellow, and red. And it's this sort of reddish rust. It's just really like a, almost like a bronze color. I think my light is fading, unfortunately, but I hope that you can see. My other purchase of yarn was from Whistle Bear. Actually, both this purchase and the gift from my parents is from Whistle Bear. Um, I saw that Florence Sperling, designer of the Scout Shawl, had released, was going to release a new pattern called the Scout Neckerchief, or I think she might have changed the name since then. And I was so excited. I love knitting the Scout Shawl. I would like to knit another version of it that's smaller. Um, so I bought the yarn for it, intending to cast it on as soon as the pattern was released. The only problem with that is that the designer changed the required amounts of yarn, like the day, a day before the pattern came out. So I bought this yarn in advance because she put online how much yarn was required. And I purchased, um, yeah, I'll show you, these mini skeins because all but one of the colors in the shawl was, would have been, a mini skein would have been enough to knit it, but now she's updated it. So actually now mini skein is not enough for any of the colors in the shawl. So I'm not planning on knitting the pattern anymore. Maybe in the future, but I'm just like a little bit annoyed about that because it's not that they're gonna go to waste because they won't, but I did purchase it with a very specific pattern in mind and I'm a bit frustrated that the quantities were changed so soon, like to the date, release date. Um, but, so these are the minis of Evering Bell that I bought. I don't know the names of any of them because they're not on here, but I got six colors. Evering Bell is 80% mohair and 20% Wensleydale, and it's a, f a quite light fingering weight. So those are the colors I got. I think that they're beautiful. I think any, any five out of the six would have been a beautiful scout shawl. The pattern calls for five colors, but I think that you could take any color away from this group and it would still make a really gorgeous palette. Like, that's very nice and green. That would be nice. Maybe that's a less good palette. Take away the hot pink and it becomes a very sort of springy palette. And then if you take away, oops, the dark green, you get like, I feel this is like a gap in the 2000s striped clothes in a really fun way. So I love the colors. The yarn is gorgeous. I'll use it for something. I just don't know what, probably for color work. Um, but not for this scout neckerchief, because I would have to buy so much more yarn to be able to do it. I think that that's a sort of pattern that is really great to knit from stash, but I just don't have that much yarn of the, that could be knit together um, in that many colors. So here, so I, I think I'm gonna hold, hold up and wait on that. Knitting that, a bit of a disappointment though. Okay, now I'll show you the gift from my parents for Hanukkah. A bit of a weird gift. Uh, I think that the story was that they went onto the Whistle Bear website and the Whistle Bear was sold out of quite a lot of stuff, so they bought what was left. Um, I think it's nice, I'm excited to use it, but I do think that that's quite a funny sort of way of giving, of receiving wool. Um, 
I'm trying to be quite mindful of what will I buy, but I do like having a little bit of a challenge thrown at me. So I'll show you. So this is an extremely generous gift from my lovely parents. Um, it's it's all Aaron Waite Cheviot Marsh, which is 100% lamb's wool blend of Romney Marsh and Romney Cheviot, and raised in the Cheviot Hills. So. They got me a mix of three colors, all at sea, which is this navy, which they gave me four of. Um, longitude, which is this sort of medium to light blue, which they also gave me four of. And hedgeberry, which is like a a uh, muted magenta, sort of plum color, which I have three of. So <laughs> this is my color, these are my colors, and this is a color that I don't think I've ever worn, but I know that a lot of people love this color. So at first I was thinking I would make a shawl out of this as a gift, because I have about 700 meters of it. I've got four times 175. So roughly 700 meters of this, just, just over, which is enough to make a beautiful shawl. And then I saw the Funfetti pattern by Sylvia Watts Cherry. And now I'm kind of thinking like maybe I could use these three together. Um, with like, uh, if I maybe one other color in the mix would really change the way that they look together in a fun way. So I only started looking at that today. It's just sort of playing in the corner of my mind. But um, I'm having a lot of fun. It feels like a challenge. The wool is extremely beautiful and I'm very happy to have it. And it definitely has brought me out of my comfort zone a bit with this sort of medium blue, which isn't a color I often go for. I love the, I mean, the two that are my colors, I think are really stunning as well. Um, so those are all of my acquisitions. I also acquired some three millimeter DPNs, which I have spoken about numerous times um, in this video so far. This has been a bit more of a rambly one. I think I've lost the light <laughs> uh, during the filming of this. Another reason why I haven't recorded as much is because it gets dark so early here. Like it's, it's quarter to 4 p.m. right now and it's getting dark. I mean, the sun sets at four, I think, currently. But hopefully the light in this video is fine and um, I've had so much to show you. I hope you've enjoyed. If you would like, leave me a comment on what you would do with these three colors of wool. Do you think that they look good together? If you were going to add another color to this, what, what would you add? I'm curious to know. I have no idea. Uh, I, I really appreciate you watching. So, thank you. And I will see you next time. Bye.